Hello friends, I am Dr. Neelam Mahajan. I shall be discussing suppositories and pessaries under your paper product development 1. In this module, we shall be learning about suppositories and pessaries, various suppository types, factors affecting drug absorption from rectal suppositories, typical stability problems and storage of suppositories and pessaries, ideal requirements and specifications of suppository bases and different types of suppository bases. The term suppository is derived from the Latin word suppositus which means to place under. Suppositories are avoid or conical medicated solids intended for insertion into one of the several orifices of the body uh, to name some rectum, vagina and to a lesser extent the urethra excluding the mouth. They became popular by the mid 19th century when several unwanted side effects and disadvantages which were inherent to oral therapy focused attention on the rectal route for administration of drugs. Drugs may be administered in suppository form for either local or systemic effects. Such an action depends on the nature of the drug, its concentration and the rate of absorption. Emollients, astringents, antibacterial agents, hormones, steroids and local anesthetics are dispensed in suppository form for treating local conditions of vagina, rectum or urethra. Various types of suppositories are known which include rectal suppositories, vaginal suppositories, urethral suppositories, layered suppositories, soft gelatin suppositories and hydrogel suppositories. Now we will talk about rectal suppositories. Rectal suppositories usually employ vehicles that melt or soften at body temperature and are not compressed as tablets because the amount of liquid in the rectal cavity is inadequate for tablet disintegration. For adults, they weigh about 2 grams and are usually tapered to resemble a torpedo shape. Suppositories for children weigh about 1 gram and have a corresponding reduction in size. These rectal suppositories are primarily intended for the treatment of constipation and hemorrhoids and systemic actions in conditions where oral medication would not be retained or absorbed properly such as during severe nausea and vomiting or in paralytic ileus. The rectal suppositories employ a wide variety of drugs including analgesics, antispasmodics, sedatives, tranquilizers and antibacterial agents. Now we will talk about vaginal suppositories. These are sometimes also called pessaries, weigh about 3 to 5 gram and usually are molded and are globular or oviform in shape. They can also be compressed on a tablet press into modified conical shapes. The compressed tablet for vaginal use is usually almond shaped to ease insertion and to provide maximum surface area to facilitate tablet disintegration and hasten dispersion of the drug on the vaginal wall. The moisture level of the vagina is sufficient to allow ready dissolution of a tablet formulated 
to require minimum water for disintegration. A typical vaginal tablet contains active ingredients with lactose and or anhydrous dextrose as excipients and boric acid or phosphoric acid for adjusting the acidity of the vagina to approximately pH 5. Vaginal suppositories are usually used for topical therapy as in the treatment of vaginitis or as a spermatocyte. They also can be used for introducing drugs with systemic effects. Now talking about urethral suppositories, these are sometimes called bogies and are pencil shaped and pointed at one extremity. Urethral suppositories intended for males weigh about 4 gram each and are 100 to 150 millimeter long. For females, they are 2 gram each and usually 60 to 75 millimeter in length. Now, let us talk about layered suppositories. The multi layered suppositories serve the dual purpose of separating incompatible drugs in different layers and providing different melting characteristics for controlling the rate of drug absorption. The layering also may be accomplished by multi-layering the suppository in the horizontal plane. This is accomplished by partially filling the mold, allowing the mass to congeal and pouring additional layers on those previously solidified. The patented layered suppository comprising an outer shell that has a melting point of 37 to 38 degrees Celsius and a core that has a melting point of 34 to 35 degrees Celsius and that is contained within and completely surrounded by the shell has been reported. Each layer contains different drugs. Now talking about soft gelatin suppositories, soft gelatin suppositories of varying shapes filled with either liquid or solid mixtures of the drug have been made for rectal as well as vaginal use. Solutions of gelatin, alginates, cellulose derivatives, polyvinyl pyrolidone or silicates mixed with the desired active ingredients are poured into the appropriately shaped molds and lyophilized. The resultant suppositories are non-melting but readily dissolve in body fluids. Then talking about hydrogel suppositories, rectal administration of a cylindrical hydrogel for 12 hour periods after it has been soaked in an aqueous drug solution followed by withdrawal and replacement by a second soaked cylindrical hydrogel as well as use of an osmotic delivery system has been reported. Then talking about coated suppositories, coatings have been applied to suppositories to protect them from fast disintegration to act as lubricants and to prevent polisking of adjacent suppositories during storage. Polyethylene glycol, cetyl alcohol or a patented polyvinyl alcohol and tween coating is applied for these purposes by dipping the suppository in the coating solution until the desired coating thickness is obtained. Now we shall discuss the factors affecting drug absorption from 
rectal suppositories. First of all, we shall discuss physiological factors affecting drug absorption from rectal suppositories. So friends, by now you have developed familiarity with the terms suppositories and pessaries and their various types. Now let us have a discussion on the factors affecting drug absorption from rectal suppositories. First of all, we should learn about the physiological factors affecting drug absorption from rectal suppositories. A number of drugs cannot be administered orally because either the drugs are affected by the digestive juices or their therapeutic activity is modified by the liver after absorption. After a drug is absorbed from the small intestine, the drug is carried by the hepatic portal vein to the liver. The liver modifies many drugs chemically and thereby often reduces their systemic effectiveness. On the other hand, a major portion of the same drugs can be absorbed from the anorectal area and still retain therapeutic value. The lower hemorrhoidal veins surrounding the colon and rectum enter into the inferior vena cava and thus bypass the liver. The upper hemorrhoidal vein does connect with the portal veins leading to the liver. More than half of the rectally administered drugs are absorbed directly into the general circulation. The lymphatic circulation also helps in absorbing a rectally administered drug and in diverting the absorbed drug from the liver. Absorption of drugs from the anorectal area is affected by such physiological factors as colonic contents, circulation, pH, lack of buffering capacity, physiological state and the mucus blanket on the lumen wall. The pH of the rectal mucosa plays a significant rate controlling role in drug absorption. Rectal fluids have virtually no buffer capacity and as a consequence the dissolving drugs determine the pH existing in the anorectal area. The anorectal and colonic mucosae are selectively permeable to the uncharged drug molecule, whereas the ionized drugs penetrate the mucosa poorly or negligibly. Therefore, drug absorption can be increased by the use of buffer solutions or salts that convert the pH of the anorectal area to a value that increases the concentration of unionized drug. The barrier separating the colonic lumen from the blood is preferentially permeable to the unionized forms of drugs. Weaker acids and bases are more readily absorbed than the stronger highly ionized ones. Therefore, the absorption of a drug would be enhanced most likely by a change in the pH of the rectal mucosa that would increase the proportion of unionized drug. Absorption of acidic drugs 
like salicylic acid was markedly increased when the pH of the surrounding fluids was lowered. In contrast with a basic drug like quinine which becomes more ionized at the lower pH values absorption was decreased. One of the rate limiting steps in drug absorption is the diffusion of the drug to the site on the rectal mucosa at which absorption occurs. This diffusivity is influenced not only by the nature of the medicament such as the presence of surfactant or the water lipoidal solubility of the drug but also by the physiologic state of the pollen and the amount and chemical nature of the fluids and solids present. The state of the anorectal membrane also plays a role in drug absorption. This membranous wall is covered with a relatively continuous mucus blanket which can act as a mechanical barrier for the free passage of drug through the pore space where absorption occurs. Drugs absorbed from the small and large intestines would most likely be absorbed from the anorectal area. It should be recognized that although the average body temperature is 37 degrees Celsius, patient temperatures may vary from 36 to 38 degree Celsius. So friends, after having learnt about the various types of suppositories, pessaries, their various types and uh, factors, especially the physiological factors affecting drug absorption from rectal suppositories, and now it is time to learn about the physicochemical characteristics of the drug which can affect absorption of drugs from rectal suppositories. The sequence of events leading to drug absorption from the anorectal area can be diagrammatically represented. In order for the drug to be available for absorption, it must be released from the suppository and distributed by the surrounding fluids to sites of absorption. Lipid water partition coefficient and degree of ionization are the physicochemical characteristics of drugs affecting their absorption from rectal suppositories. By dissolving in the fluids, there is wide contact of the drug with the lumen walls thereby increasing drug contact with a large number of absorption sites. If the drug has a lipid water coefficient favoring fat solubility, the drug is released slowly from its suppository excipient. For example, a drug that is very soluble in coca butter and present in low concentration does not escape to the surrounding aqueous solution as readily as the drug that is slightly soluble in the coca butter. Therefore, water soluble, oil insoluble salts are preferred in fat based suppositories. For water soluble suppository type bases from which the drug is released as the vehicle dissolves, the water soluble salts should be chosen to ensure quicker drug absorption. The rate limiting step 
in drug absorption from suppositories is the partitioning of the dissolved drug from the melted base and not the rate of solution of the drug in the body fluids. The rate at which the drug diffuses to the surface of the suppository, the particle size of the suspended drug and the presence of surface active agents are factors affecting drug release from suppositories. Drug particle size is directly related to absorption rate. The drug absorption rate decreases with an increase in drug particle size because the larger the particle size, the slower the rate of solution. Surfactants can both increase and decrease drug absorption rate. The acceleration of drug absorption might be attributed either due to relative surface tension lowering of the vehicle or to the mucus peptizing action of the vehicle. The rectal membrane is covered by a continuous mucus blanket which may be more readily washed away by colonic fluids that have reduced surface tension. The cleansing action caused by the surfactant containing vehicle may make additional pore spaces available for drug absorption, thus facilitating drug movement across the rectal membrane barrier. The presence of surfactant may or may not aid absorption depending on concentration and possible interaction with the drug. In the case of phenol type drugs, absorption rate is decreased in the presence of surfactant probably because of the formation of a drug surfactant complex. In suppositories, when the amount of drug in the rectal fluids is above the rate determining level, marked increases in drug concentration play no role in altering established drug absorption rates. Drug concentration is related, however, to release rates from suppository bases. Once the drug is released from the suppository base and reaches the site of absorption on the lumen wall, the lipid soluble undissociated drug is the most readily absorbed form. Completely ionized drugs are poorly absorbed. Unionized substances that are lipid insoluble also are poorly absorbed. Weak acids with a pKa below 4.3 and weak bases with a pKa below 8.5 are usually readily absorbed. Highly ionized compounds are poorly absorbed. Acids having pKa values below 3 and pKa values for bases above 10 indicate negligible absorption rates. Friends, by now you have become familiar with various physiological factors affecting drug absorption and physicochemical characteristics of the drugs which can affect absorption of drugs from rectal suppositories. Now we will discuss how the physicochemical characteristics of the base and the adjuvants used in rectal suppositories 
can affect drug absorption from rectal suppositories. Various properties of the suppository base can affect drug absorption. The absorption rate of drugs is faster from fatty bases having a lower melting range than from those with higher melting range. Absorption rate increases along with hydroxyl value. In one of the studies using polyethylene glycol bases, a decrease in absorption time was observed with increase in the molecular mass of the polyethylene glycol bases. Since fatty bases may harden for several months after molding, this rise in melting range certainly would affect absorption. Similarly, adjuvants in the formula can also affect drug absorption through changes in the rheological properties of the bases at body temperature or by affecting the dissolution of the drug in the media of the dosage form. For example, in emulsion type bases, it was shown that the amount of water soluble drug released increased with the water content of the base and that the rate of drug released could be prolonged by the addition of an aqueous polymer. Addition of hydrophobic colloidal silicon oxide to fat base suppositories dramatically changed the rheological behavior of the mass. Salicylates were found to improve the rectal absorption of water soluble antibiotics in lipophilic bases. Now let us discuss the blood levels from rectal suppositories. Friends, it is well established that the rectum or colon is a dependable site for drug absorption. But not all investigators agree that the suppository dosage form yields therapeutically adequate blood levels. Some drugs are absorbed rectally more quickly and at therapeutically more effective levels than with oral administration. However, absorption of some drugs is slower by the rectal route than by the oral route. Therefore, in some cases, the suppository does yield effective therapeutic blood levels, although anema yields faster and higher concentration of drug in the blood. Now, let's talk about the typical stability problems of rectal suppositories. Storage stability studies are normally conducted at 4 degrees Celsius and room temperature. Every effort should be made in formulating suppositories for the tropics to maintain the physical and chemical stability of these suppositories in their final package even when they are stored at temperatures as high as 50 degree Celsius. High melting bases, water soluble bases and special polyethylene shell packages must be considered. Stability studies of such suppositories must be conducted in the final package at temperatures at which these will eventually be kept. Labeling of rectal suppositories should emphasize storage in a cool place. Storage studies also should include anticipated problems resulting from shipment. Cool conditions for shipment are often required. The suppository overwrap foil 
also can cause problems in time. For example, if the suppository contains an acid, the foil wrapping may be attacked and develop pinholes. Coca butter suppositories in storage sometimes bloom. That is, they form a white powdery deposit on the surface. This is unsightly and usually can be avoided if the suppositories are wrapped in foil and stored at uniform cool or refrigerator temperatures. Fat-based suppositories have been shown to harden for a period of time after manufacture. This upward shift in melting range is due to slow crystallization to the more stable polymorphic forms of the base. Depending on the initial melting range and formula of the suppository, the hardening phenomena may affect the melting of the suppository and subsequent drug absorption rates. The softening time test and differential scanning calorimetry can be used as stability indicating test methods to predict problems of this sort. Storage immediately after manufacture at an elevated temperature below the melting range speeds up the aging process. Since the hardening phenomenon is a finite process, this tempering approach can minimize further changes in melting range which may be worth the addition to manufacturing cycle time. Talking about the storage of rectal suppositories, suppositories should be protected from heat preferably by storing in the refrigerator polyethylene glycol suppositories and suppositories enclosed in a solid shell are less prone to distortion at temperatures slightly above body temperature. Glycerinated gelatin suppositories should be protected from heat, moisture and dry air by packaging in well sealed containers and storing in a cool place. So friends, by now we have learned about the various factors affecting absorption of drugs from suppositories. We have talked about their storage and labeling also. In, now I will discuss the various types of suppository bases, their specifications and the requirements of the ideal suppository base while manufacturing rectal suppositories. Friends, now I shall discuss the requirements of an ideal suppository base to be used in rectal suppositories. An ideal suppository base must melt at rectal temperature that is 36 degrees Celsius. However, bases with higher melting ranges may be employed in certain circumstances. An ideal base should be completely non-toxic and non-irritating to sensitive and inflamed tissues. It should be compatible with a broad variety of drugs, should have no metastable forms, should shrink sufficiently on cooling so as to release itself from the mold without the need for mold lubricant should be non-sensitizing and should have wetting and emulsifying properties. Furthermore, an ideal suppository base should have high water number, should be stable on storage, that is it should not change color, odor or drug release 
pattern can be manufactured by molding by hand machine compression or extrusion often the addition of drugs changes the desirable characters of the base judicious formulation requires the use of the physical values described for seeking help in the choice of the base for the drug now i shall be discussing the specifications of an ideal suppository base the first specification that a base should satisfy is the origin and chemical composition this involves the prediction of the physical or chemical incompatibilities of the base with other constituents if the exact formula composition is known including preservatives antioxidants and emulsifiers a brief description of the composition of the base reveals the source of origin and chemical makeup second specification for an ideal suppository base is melting range since fatty suppository bases are complex mixtures of triglycerides and therefore do not have sharp melting points their melting characteristics are expressed as a range indicating the temperature at which the fat starts to melt and temperature at which it is completely melted third specification is solid fat index or sfi it is determined by dilatometry which necessitates melting the base to carry out measurements the solidification and melting ranges of fatty bases as well as the molding character surface feel and hardness of the bases can be determined from the graph of the percentage of solids versus temperature a base with a sharp drop in solids over a short temperature span proves brittle if molded too quickly this type of base requires a reduced differential between mold temperature and mass temperature for trouble free molding suppository hardness can be determined by the solids content at room temperature since skin temperature is about 32 degree celsius one can predict a product that would be dry to touch from solids content over 30% at that temperature this is reflective only of the base immediately after molding and not of a hardened state the interval between melting point and solidification point is small or the sfi curve is sharp if the base is fatty hydroxyl value is the fourth specification of an ideal suppository base it represents the milligrams of koh that would neutralize acetic acid used to acetylate 1 gram of fat this is a measure of unesterified positions on glyceride molecules it reflects the monoglyceride and diglyceride content of a fatty base the fifth specification of a suppository base is solidification point this value allows prediction of the time required for solidifying the base when it is chilled in the mold if the interval between the melting range and solidification point is 10 degree celsius or more the time required for solidification may have to be shortened by augmenting refrigeration 
to produce a more efficient manufacturing procedure. The sixth specification of a suppository base is saponification value. It is the number of milligrams of potassium hydroxide required to neutralize the free acids and saponify the esters contained in 1 gram of a fat. It is an indication of the type of glyceride as well as the amount of glyceride present. The saponification value of a fatty base ranges from 200 to 245. Seventh specification is iodine value. This value expresses the number of grams of iodine that reacts with 100 gram of fat or other unsaturated material. High iodine values indicate increased possibility of decomposition by moisture, acids and oxygen. A fatty base should have iodine value less than 7. The eighth specification of a suppository base is water number. It reflects the amount of water in grams that can be incorporated in 100 gram of fat. High water number indicates that a high percentage of water can be incorporated in it. Water number can be increased by the addition of surface active agents, monoglycerides and other emulsifiers. Last but not the least specification for an ideal suppository base is acid value. It reflects the number of milligrams of potassium hydroxide required to neutralize the free acid in 1 gram of substance. Low acid values or complete absence of acid are important for good suppository bases. Free acids complicate formulation work because they react with other ingredients and can also cause irritation when in contact with mucous membranes. A fatty base should have acid value below 0.2. Now talking about the various types of bases popularly used in rectal suppositories. The first in the line is coca butter also called as theobroma oil. It is the most widely used suppository base. It is often used in compounding prescriptions when no base is specified. It satisfies many of the requirements for an ideal base since it is innocuous, bland and non-reactive, melts at body temperature. Its melting point lies between 30 degrees Celsius and 35 degrees Celsius. Its iodine value is between 34 and 38 and its acid value is not higher than 4. However, coca butter can become rancid, melt in warm weather, liquefy when incorporated with certain drugs and with overheating above 36 degrees Celsius isomerizes to unstable crystals within undesirable lowered melting point. At temperatures below 36 degrees Celsius, negligible amounts of unstable forms are obtained. Therefore, minimal use of heating in the process of melting the fat is recommended. Prolonged heating must be avoided as much as possible. Low contractility during solidification causes the suppositories to adhere to the molds and necessitates the use of mold release agents or lubricants. Such drugs as volatile oils, creosote, phenol and chloral hydrate lower the melting point of coca butter to a considerable extent. The solidification point of coca butter lies about 
12 to 13 degree below its melting point. Therefore, suppository mass can be kept in a fluid state at comparatively low temperatures. Constant agitation maintains coca butter liquid at temperatures below its solidification point. Coca butter does not contain emulsifiers and therefore does not take up large quantities of water. Let's talk about coca butter substitutes. The satisfactory coca butter substitutes maintain the many desirable properties of coca butter. For example, cocum butter is used as a substitute for coca butter due to its lower cost. Vegetable oils are typically treated to produce suppository bases. Let's learn about them. Fat type suppository bases are produced from a variety of materials either synthetic or natural in origin. For example, vegetable oils like coconut or palm kernel oil are modified by esterification, hydrogenation and fractionation at different melting ranges to obtain the desired product. Now let's talk about polyethylene glycols as suppository basis. Long chain polymers of ethylene oxide have a general formula and exist as liquids when their average molecular weight ranges from 200 to 600 and as wax like solids when their molecular weights are above 1000. Their water solubility, hygroscopicity and vapor pressure decreases with increasing average molecular weights. The wide range of melting points and solubilities makes possible the formulation of suppositories with various degrees of heat stability and different dissolution rates. They do not hydrolyze or deteriorate, are physiologically inert and do not support mold growth, do not require a mold lubricant and are easier to prepare as compared to coca butter suppositories. Clinical results seem to be the better criterion for choosing the desired polyethylene glycol base and in vitro test methods should be used for controlling product uniformity of different production lots. The polyethylene glycol based suppositories can be prepared by both molding and cold compression methods but cannot be prepared suitably by hand rolling. The mold must be dry because of the solubility of the base in water. The melted mass must be allowed to cool almost to the congealing point before pouring or the resultant suppository will be fissured uh, owing to the crystallization and contraction of the polymer. Such suppositories may be easily fractured in packaging or handling. So this is a word of caution. Now we shall talk about hydrophilic suppository bases. First in the line are the glycerin suppositories which make use of these bases. Glycerinated gelatin suppositories do not melt at body temperature but rather dissolve in the secretions of the body cavity in which they are inserted. Solution time of these suppositories is regulated by the pr proportion of gelatin, glycerin and water used, the nature of gelatin used and the chemical reaction of the drug with gelatin. Glycerinated gelatin suppositories mold or bacterial growth and as a consequence they are stored in a cool place and often contain agents that inhibit microbial growth. Because glycerin is hygroscopic, these suppositories are packaged in materials that protect them from environmental moisture. To make glycerinated gelatin suppositories, glycerin is heated 
in a suitable container to about 120 degrees Celsius. The medicament is dissolved with gentle stirring in the heated glycerin after which the purified water is added and mixed and hot mixture is immediately poured into a suitable mold. Now coming over to water dispersible suppository bases. Water dispersible bases offer storage and handling of suppositories at elevated temperatures, broad drug compatibility and non-supportive of microbial growth are non-toxic and non-sensitive. Several non-ionic surface active materials closely related chemically to polyethylene glycols can be used for formulating both water soluble and oil soluble drugs. Surfactants most commonly used in suppository formulations are polyoxyethylene sorbitan, fatty acid esters, polyoxyethylene stearates and sorbitan fatty acid esters. The surface active agents so mentioned may be used alone, blended or used in combination with other suppository vehicle materials to yield a wide range of melting points and consistencies. Use of surfactants may lead to an increased rate of drug absorption or a decrease in therapeutic activity consequent to interaction with drugs. Therefore, each formulation containing surfactants must be tested in vivo to evaluate its medical effectiveness as well as its safety. Another type of water dispersible suppository base is water soluble cellulose derivatives like methyl cellulose and sodium carboxymethyl cellulose. Lastly, the hydrogels. Hydrogels are defined as macromolecular network that swell but do not dissolve in water. This swelling is a consequence of the presence of hydrophilic functional groups attached to the polymeric network. Hydrogels employed for rectal or vaginal drug delivery have been prepared from polymers like polyvinyl alcohol, hydroxyethyl methacrylate, polyacrylic acid or polyoxyethylene. So friends, today we learned what are suppositories and passeries, their various types, stability problems and storage. Furthermore, we became familiar with factors affecting drug absorption from rectal suppositories, suppository bases, their various types, ideal requirements and specifications. Thank you very much.